This conference will now be recorded. So guys, we have deep learning for the day to begin with. So when I say deep learning, it's basically a broader family of machine learning, right? Uh, we, we have seen so many of the ML algorithms. We have seen classification. We have seen regression. We have seen some uh, unsupervised through uh, clustering models. So what exactly is this deep learning and where it will fit in in our you know, problem statements? Now in the traditional uh, ML algorithm, there are few uh, AI problems, right? So there is something known as the natural language processing. Now this is something which uh, we'll be doing uh, day after tomorrow, right? So I'll start with NLP day after tomorrow. What is natural language processing with a natural language toolkit in Python, right? Then uh, the next one is image uh, recognition. So image recognition is like what now? So a uh, facial recognition is one thing. Okay, that this is a face, right? These are the eyes, but when it comes to uh, understanding, okay, this face belongs to person A, this face belongs to person B. So here ML models, they become really heavy. So mathematically or computation wise, uh, they are not optimized and they may not be able uh, to even uh, give us the correct results. So they won't be able to recognize the things and there are many other limitations. So deep learning is one of the ways uh, one of the you can say a different algorithmic approach. Now this will not just only work on a labeling or a regression, right? It's gonna extract the data out of your data sets. Now feature extraction one of the biggest implementations with deep learning models. You have an image of a drawing room. So this image may be divided into small patches, right? And you can very easily identify that. OK, in this room, we have this small chair. We have a lamp. We have a laptop or a screen or a computer, right? So you can extract the features from an image even. Right, so it's more than what ML can do. So what is deep learning in the deep learning? We uh, got all your uh, ML model kind of uh, algorithms, right? But they are a bit on a different approach. So here what we have is we have kind of uh, a graph data structure, right? We call them the processing layers. So these layers, they will process the data and finally you will get a result. Now these layers, they are basically the kind of neural networks for us, but we're going to understand the term very soon. So given an image as an input, it will go through certain layers of algorithms and finally a resultant output will be predicted, right? So that that's what the deep learning is all about. So in the automatic machine translation object classification in photographs, if you, there is something which you have written with your hands, right? Uh, how that handwriting can be generated. So there are texts which can be generated images uh, can be uh, given some captions, right? You can uh, make sure that your black and white images can be colorized. There may be automatic game playing. Right, various applications of deep learning exist in the industry, guys. So Google Lens as an app is one of the examples of deep learning applications. Now uh, there there is some you know a kind of labels written, and the task is where you have some words in a particular language, you need to translate these words to some desired language. So with the help of you know image recognition. So we can translate uh, the text and it can be solved with the help of these deep learning problems, right? There are few black and white images. You can colorize them back. So th these are again the applications of deep learning. So deep learning is all about artificial neural networks, right? So ANNs. when I was talking about the machine learning approach, so your ML models or machine learning is uh, something where you write a mathematical algorithm do a classification or a regression 
right so that that's the only uh, words two of the problems which you're trying to solve either you are going to classify the data or you're going to predict something in the continuous variables so deep learning we change the algorithmic approach we say the models here they will be neural networks now artificial neural network is going to uh, be replication of your brain structure right how how a human brain works is how an ann works right so let us see in the human uh, brain we have a nerve cell now this nerve cell is known as neuron so your deep learning is nothing it's a superset of machine learning right it's based on machine learning only so here the model of computing is inspired from the structure of the brain right so in the brain you got nerve cells nerve cell is referred to as neuron so what exactly neuron is neuron is com comprised of three important terminologies for us right the first one is dendrite so this guy receives the signals from the other neurons or you can say that this is an edge to a vertex in the graph if you can recall our graph data structure right so it's an edge to the uh, vertex in a graph the cell body is your vertex and this cell body is going to do a mathematical uh, part so this guy will just add up all the inputs right so this is going to add all the inputs which are being received from certain dendrites so if you are basically uh, going to train your brain and there are certain inputs which are being received to your brain like anything for example in this case of covid 19 in the coronavirus case everyone is giving you only one single input that is coronavirus right so you get a nerve cell in your brain which is trained for this covid 19 and there are so many various inputs on that nerve cell so all those inputs get summed up and they generate an output right so your cell body will generate an output now if this output is greater than a threshold value right so you generate some results typically so guys uh, the exon is the other one right it is used to transmit signals to the other cells so you got an input you got an output and you have a cell body which is going to do only the submission the mathematical addition so can i get a smiley as an acknowledgement from all of you are we good to go what is a neuron or a nerve cell this is what we have in our brains right it's not something we are dealing as of now in our uh, computational behavior now the nerve cell can be represented by a model called perceptron so the mathematical representation to sum up the data inputs in the cell body was your exact neuron but the replication of neuron in your computer science is called as a perceptron right so in computer science we say it's a perceptron rather than a neuron so of course it's an artificial neuron now right so perceptron is an artificial neuron so how you represent your perceptron now your perceptron is going to receive inputs x1 to xn every input is going to have a weight let's say w1 to wn now what is meant by the weight so in our childhood days uh, there there would have been you know the times where uh, we were you know kind of studying few of the subjects right and uh, some of the subjects right they were more influential or more interesting for us what could have been the reason the reason is the weight for that particular subject is more as compared to the others so guys there are certain inputs and every input may have a weight based on that weight right so we are trying to uh, uh, incline our decisions correct now there are x1 to xn which are inputs they have particular weights now we got a transfer function this guy over here 
transfer function or submission function will do only one job that is multiply the weight with the input and add them to generate a result right so this guy will sum up all the inputs along with the weights and thereafter it's gonna generate one result and that result is forwarded to an activation function activation function is the one who will generate the result right so guys this is uh, one of uh, the perceptron models let us try to explore this perceptron models in uh, one of the more approaches so perceptron is a linear model it will do a binary classification right this models a nerve cell in our brain it's a neuron for your brain an artificial neuron so perceptron is majorly into binary classification i can either say yes or no that's how a human brain works so you touch some hot surface so your brain will uh, respond whether you should touch it or not right either one or zero so if it is zero you take back your hand if it is one you keep the hand on the hot surface so your neuron will receive n number of inputs so this n number of inputs may be considered as n different features or the attributes now they will have weights right your submission function is represented as weight into input then addition of all these right so we are going to say w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus so on and so forth wn xn so you generated a sum right your submission function or the transfer function generates a sum then this sum is given to an activation function let the activation function be f of s where f is the input that is your uh, sum which which is generated by the submission function and this activation function may take a decision right so there may be a threshold based on which i can say okay i'll give the output as one or output as zero right so this is what a perceptron mathematically is represented let us try to visualize perceptron once again so perceptron will have these inputs and the weights your activation function will take the input as sum will consider some threshold value as theta in case the sum is greater than theta we give the result as 1 else we give the result as 0 can i get one once again an acknowledgement are we good to go now there are certain inputs right let us see what are those inputs so there are features available uh, as in your uh, father your mother and your sibling let us assume that there are three people who are giving you an advice right so every advice will have a weight so weight as in if your father is saying that will be one weight your mother is saying that will be another weight your sibling is saying that can be some another weight right so with whom you are uh, mostly connected as a bond right so that input is going to have more weightage for you so your function activation function is going to sum up everything now you decide a threshold okay this is my threshold in case all the inputs crosses this threshold i'll take this decision else i will not take this decision right so this is how perceptron works guys so we'll try to write down the perceptron and uh, we'll see uh, how the perceptron will work but before we write the perceptron right so there is something known as uh, weights and bias available in your perceptron model for a perceptron you can have one input by yourself that's like x0 w0 so uh, this input is an extra input we call a bias so that we can deviate the results here and there right weights will determine the slope of the classifier line where bias allows us to shift the line towards the left or right so normally bias is treated as another weighted input value so this is x0 
right you can by default consider this input as one so that if you are having it much of the impact should not come but you can anytime use this uh, bias to deviate the results here and there right so your uh, family is saying Le let's not uh, arrange a trip for you but your friends are saying let's go to goa so uh, your friend's input is going to be a bias input for us right so that that's how we're trying to consider so let me come up here and try to write a neuron for you guys so let's just quickly open the pie chart so guys uh, your perceptron we have to create today right and it's not that difficult code for us this is our half century today so we'll write a new python file this goes like session number 50. all right so here in the session number 50 i'm going to uh, first of all write this class called perceptron right so what is a perceptron perceptron is going to have some inputs it is going to have a submission function and it is going to have something known as activation function right so i'm gonna define something known as in it so for the uh you can say perceptron every input is going to have a weight associated with it right so you have input x0 and a weight w0 so that that's how you have this uh, part right so i'm gonna consider this inputs over here so these are weighted not the weighted input so these are just the inputs and i will say self dot inputs is inputs now i'm going to define something known as submission function or transfer function then there may be an activation function. So this is how your perceptron uh, should be guys, right? So let us define the main function here. And uh, let's say the main here. Okay, now uh, what I will do is I'll create some dummy data for us, right? In the main function, I'm going to write uh, inputs. So let us say some inputs. So this is like uh, a list of lists now for me. So the first list is let's say zero and zero. Then I'm gonna come up and say zero and one. Then let's say one and zero. Then I'll say one and one. Right, so guys, uh, this is the list of your uh, inputs and uh, whatever you are trying to create over here is first as input second one as weight right input weight input weight input weight right so this is a list of lists so we have this input and then you have this weight can i get a smiley from all of you So I think this is not that challenging for us, right? So these are the, okay, so just give me a moment. So uh, input and the weight is going to be a list. So there may be n number of inputs, right? So this first input is your x0, then x1, x2, and x3, right? So we got this uh, n number of inputs for us. So you create a perceptron, your perceptron over here is an object, right? Your perceptron is quite object oriented programming structure. It's not a challenge uh, to understand. So it, it's uh, going to be by default, there is none inputs if you create a model, right? But uh, you supply the inputs. So I'm gonna pass these inputs to my perceptron. So thereafter, I'm gonna say a print statement. So this is perceptron created with 
inputs and here i'm gonna say print me the inputs so we got a perceptron which is created with inputs and we have just printed uh, the inputs right so the moment you run the program here it says perceptron created with these inputs right so guys uh, once you got this perceptron created the next part is the submission function of your perceptron so what is the role of submission function its role is to come up and create a sum right and this sum will be your uh, input multiplied by the weight 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 you're gonna add everything right so i'm gonna define a variable called self dot sum which is zero so you create this uh, sum as an attribute of the object perceptron object right this guy is by default zero for us now the next thing which i'm going to do is i'm going to write a loop here right so let's say for i in uh, range of so we'll have this length of self dot inputs you, you're gonna iterate in these inputs now so what you're gonna do is self dot sum plus assign self dot inputs of zero multiplied by self dot inputs of one so this is quite hard coded as of now right so you need to understand what i did this this is kind of a bit hard coded for us so if you want to make it uh, more object oriented so what you can do is you can just create a class called input right so in the input we can uh, have something known as input and uh, weight so you can say self dot input is input and self dot weight is weight so it's up to you right if you wanna do more of oops but as of now i'm not considering this okay so you can consider more of uh, your object oriented structure and you can try solving it in that way it becomes more dynamic so you can just say self dot input multiplied by self dot weight so just to you know make you guys understand what's the perceptron and how we can code it so this is one very basic approach right now once this loop is finished i'm gonna say print summation function output right comma self dot sum so you thereafter say perceptron dot summation function you execute the summation function so you run the program okay so i think uh, so this is going to be z this is going to be i -th zero and i -th one my bad so guys it's a list of lists for us so if you see uh, this guy is a list of lists right so zero one two and three so i'm just going to say i at zero i at one right so zero 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 one one zero one one right so two zero two one three zero three one so in my summation function i got this output as one can i get a smile so this is all uh, good to go for everyone how to write a summation function these, these are random inputs right so these are just the uh, binary inputs which i have taken now in my activation function I'm going to define a threshold, right? So let us say that there is a threshold. The threshold value is one, right? So in case your summation function sum is greater than the threshold, right? So you generate an output, right? So you say uh, output is one. In the else case, you say output is zero. Right, so here we are going to come up and say decision taken, decision 
not taken so there may be some decision which you are trying to take based on these inputs right so if the output is uh, uh, coming up greater than or equal to threshold right so let us say greater than or equal to threshold so lastly i'm going to come up and say your perceptron dot activation function now you run the program so it says the uh, output is one decision taken guys can i get a smiley it's a very very easy concept to write a perceptron model right so there is a perceptron which you have written and this perceptron is going to be not that challenging approach for us so i've just given you uh, one of the snippets over the chat so please review that and let me know in case you have any query so i will request everyone to attend the sessions regularly now don't miss the session don't rely on my recorded sessions right so this is very important right once you are having a live session it's different from the recorded session okay so let's see the next part now now in order to come up and perform your uh, exact approach to your neuron your activation or the transformation function can be any one out of these six in the deep learning environment we know what's a perceptron we know how to code a perceptron but now you need to understand that you got some activation functions now these are mathematical functions and let us have a look at them one by one and what you're gonna do is you're gonna code them so you're so today you you're gonna code guys you're gonna have an assignment work right so this session will not take a lot of a long time for the day right so you have a neural network right in a neural network you have a you have an input part you have a submission part and you have an activation function so there are six activation functions which we are going to explore today so you got linear or identity unit or the binary step sigmoid or logistic now this is the reason why i didn't uh, touch down logistic regression right so i wanted to give you guys uh, a fair understanding on what is sigmoid or logistic so tomorrow we're gonna work on logistic regression and day after tomorrow we're gonna work on natural language processing all right then you got this hyperbolic 10 then we got rectified linear unit and the last one is softmax so these are the six activation functions and uh, majorly in the deep learning environment you will find sigmoid rectified linear unit and softmax being used all right so here and there these are the three important functions sigmoid rectified linear unit and the softmax so let us see them one by one the linear transform so in a linear transform you say f of x is equal to x so your function f of x is equal to x so whatever is the input is the output so uh, what i'm saying is if you write this activation function so you don't have a threshold now right you don't have a threshold for your activation function if it's a linear function whatever is the sum that is the output that is what we are trying to say in our perceptron model all right so as per our perceptron model whatever is going to be received as an input from the submission function that becomes your output so guys can i get a smiley as an acknowledgement so please consider these mathematical functions as activation functions where input is the submission input right the input of uh, your submission function binary step works with a threshold value so here what we do is we define a threshold value it depends upon you right what what is the threshold value if the value is pi and the submission function gives you the data greater than or equal to 5 you give the value as 1 else you give the value as 0 right it, it depends upon your threshold right so we say 0 in case uh, x value is less than 0 in case if it is greater than or equal to 0 we give you 1 
right so there may be a threshold value which you can decide so as of now whatever uh, we implemented that was kind of this binary step the third one is sigmoid so sigmoid uh, or logistic right so we're going to work on logistic regression tomorrow we're going to work on the same part this is a very beautiful function it's a very beautiful mathematical innovation so this function is used to convert independent variables of nearly infinite range into simple probabilities of 0 and 1 so your outputs are going to be majorly in the range of 0 to 1 so your function is going to be 1 upon 1 plus e power minus x so this is how 1 upon 1 plus e power minus x graph will also look like right so guys this is 1 upon 1 plus e power minus x so this is your mathematical function then your trigonometric function hyperbolic tan or tangent so hyperbolic tan is uh, uh, going to come up and normalize the data between minus 1 to 1 so your hyperbolic tan as the function is going to come up and give me the data as in minus 1 to 1 so everything will be the resultant between minus 1 to 1 so hyperbolic tan can be uh, used from your math import math model then we got this function called rectified linear unit now this relu or rectified linear unit is going to give you the outputs only and only for the positive part or what we can say is your uh, f of x is equal to x but only for x greater than equal to 0 whatever the summation function will give us that is the output but only when it is greater than or equal to 0 so input below 0 will never be considered so guys can i get an acknowledgement here on rectified linear unit i hope this is not that challenging at the same time you are enjoying it right okay so the last function is the softmax function and softmax function is given uh, as in e par z divided by summation of e par z so guys softmax function is a probability distribution function so what we have is we have multiple classes so let's say there are four classes and you have an input x so the main role of softmax function is to classify and give us the probabilities based on the input for various different classes so if you have four classes you get four probabilities on one single input x and thereafter you decide that this probability is going to be more suitable for this class right so this is majorly into classification now you got these six functions once again right so what are these six functions linear or identity unit of binary step sigmoid or logistic hyperbolic tan relu and the softmax so what do you need to do today guys so today is going to be a code day for you people right so it's not much of my session for the day So I'm just gonna write an assignment here for all of you. So you got the very uh, first as your linear binary. So guys, these six functions I'm going to write. You got sigmoid. You got hyperbolic tan. then you got rectified linear unit and the sixth one is softmax so what what is uh, the thing which you need to do you need to create all above functions so you can find the mathematical formulas anywhere on google right it's not a challenge right these are all mathematical formulas for us so this activation function which you have created here 
So I want you to write these activation functions. So define activation function linear. Then uh, you have this activation function binary activation function. We got this sigmoid activation function 10 H then we got this rectified linear unit and lastly we got something known as your softmax so i want you to write these functions right mathematical functions and at the same time right so take certain input x and draw or and plot them on matplotlib as as your line graph or right, i think we have a query here so yes chimpa that will be future discussion so today it's all about what are the activation functions right so you create these activation functions guys you write the mathematical part what i want you guys is to draw them on the matplotlib as a line graph so i want one graph from all of you where every uh, mathematical function should have been plotted here right all these uh, mathematical functions you should plot here so you won't be able to plot something known as your soft max maybe because it's gonna give you probabilities right so this is what we have all for the day right so it's more or less you need to code for the day not me so can i get an acknowledgement from all of you shall we proceed towards the next steps right guys so let's see uh, what do you have to do next so the first thing first is you need to say pip install so you need to say pip install natural language toolkit nltk you need to install your natural language toolkit right so this is one of the libraries then if you go here you will find now why i'm saying that you guys uh, should be doing this pre work right before our next sessions so we're going to uh, come here in tensor flow so this tensor flow is another framework for deep learning So guys, this TensorFlow you need to install. So installation uh, link is coming up here, right? So I'll just come up here and say this link. One is Natural Language Toolkit. Then uh, you have this TensorFlow installation. So these are few of the installations which you should be doing today for your future perspective, right? And the next one is PyTorch installation. So this is your uh, PyTorch. So we got get started link here. So here we are uh, installing your PyTorch, right? How you gonna work on PyTorch? So here we are. So these are the further uh, three things, right? 
and uh, guys while doing installations you may face some problems here and there so you need to uh, work on those problems and you need to fix them in case right it's very rare of the rarest that you will find some challenges here and there right so in case you find some challenges make sure you resolve them because installation of tensor flow may be challenge for some of the uh, computers because uh, we got some gpu support as well available to execute through programs but in case tensorflow is not going to work for you guys on your systems then you have google labs code labs in which you can actually execute your tensorflow programs at the same time so this is what we got for the day so we got to know what's a perceptron what's the summation function activation function you guys are going to implement these six activation functions right with the different mathematical formula you're going to plot them on matplotlib and you got this task to uh, do your natural language toolkit installations tensorflow installation and the pytorch installations so this week's going to be full of fun with respect to deep learning the sessions may not be uh, exact one or two hour duration it may be 40 minutes it may be 1 hour it may be 1 hour 30 minutes it's totally variable right based on the kind of content which i have to deliver every day so anyone having any challenge here can i get an acknowledgement from all of you so abhishek divya gagan jabjit jasnu kamal kartik manmeet navjot neeraj neha palvi pradeep ridham roop kaval saib noor sahil saloni sarthak shalini Sharan, Shashi, Shivali, Shimpa, Shivani, Soumya, and Udita. Guys, we are good to go. Okay, so as a part of this, I am uploading one more video on the YouTube. So that's gonna be uh, the shortest distance uh, uh, in the graph, right? So shortest distance in the graph is going to be uh, uploaded with one algorithm called Solin's algorithm. so i have explained the algorithm in that video and you need to implement that algorithm right it's an assignment so try to work on that as well so see you tomorrow guys have a wonderful time ahead thank you